Have you ever tried to make animations but they end up looking like this? And you've always dreamt of animating like all the YouTube giants? Well forget all of that because I'm about to show you how you can make your animations look smooth and appealing in Premiere Pro. First of all, to animate, we need to use keyframes. What a keyframe does is tell Premiere Pro what to do to an object in a certain amount of time. I'll show you an example in Premiere so that I can make sense. So I'm gonna be animating the position of this emoji. So let's go over to the start of the timeline over here. Then I'll go to the effects controls tab and move the emoji all the way to the top. And then I'll place a keyframe by clicking on the stopwatch icon. You'll see a diamond shape appear in this area. This is what a keyframe is. It tells Premiere Pro that the emoji should be on the top of the screen. Then I'll move 15 frames forward and move the position back to normal. So this is a basic animation. It tells Premiere to move the emoji from the top to the middle of the screen. And if you want to make an animation with any of these values over here, you can do the same by using the stopwatch icons. Now you know how to keyframe an object. Now let's go over velocity. Velocity basically makes the animation look realistic and pleasing to the eye because in real life things slow down and speed up as they move which an animation without velocity changes doesn't have because without velocity changes the object you're animating moves at a constant speed which makes your animations look robotic and boring so let's start adding velocity to our animations so i have this image here i keyframed it so that it moves from the left to the right and by clicking on this arrow we can see the velocity of our animation and right now it's a straight line which means it's moving at the same speed the whole time which is what we don't want right now so to add better velocity all we need to do is select the first keyframe and move this handle in a bit and then select the second keyframe and move this handle in a bit as well and after you're done you can see this little spike in the graph what this means is that when the object is moving there's a build up and slow down in the animation and this is our result and other than the spike we've just made which is called an intermediate curve there's two other types of graphs i need to talk about which are entry curves and exit curves entry curves are used when you're animating an object to move into the screen and to make an entry curve just drag the first handle to the left and drag the last handle all the way to the left it should look like this and exit curves are used when you're animating an object to move off of the screen and to make exit curves just drag the last handle to the right and the first handle all the way to the right it should look like this also watch till the end because i'll show you exactly how to make this animation from scratch using all the things you've just learned but wait there's one last thing we need to add and it's motion blur motion blur makes our overall animation look smoother and even more realistic which helps our animation look much better so let's start adding it to our animation First, delete the keyframes we've just made and then go to the FX library and search for the transform effect. Then drag it onto the object which you want to animate. So basically what the transform effect does is that it lets us add motion blur onto our object by increasing the shutter angle. The more the value, the more the motion blur. So all we have to do now is recreate the same animation in the transform effect. After recreating the animation, increase the shutter angle all the way to 360 which is the most we can get and after you're done you can notice that the motion blur appears when you play the video now that you know how to professionally animate an object you can save any animation you make as a preset and i'll show you just how to do that first go to fx controls and then right click on the transform effect then click on the save preset option over here now you can make custom presets every time you create an animation so that you don't have to redo the same thing over and over again You've mastered animation. Now I'll show you how to make this motion graphic animation from scratch. I'll have all the stuff I've used in the description so go ahead and download them. Now let's start animating. First, drag the walk vector onto the timeline and search for the color key effect in the FX library so that we can remove the white background from the guy in the middle. Then add a drop shadow and change the color to white and decrease the softness to 0. Make sure the distance is between 5 to 10. 
Now we're gonna make the circle shape thingy behind him. Find the ellipse tool by clicking on the rectangle tool over here. Then drag out a perfect circle by hitting shift and using your mouse button at the same time like this. Then go to effects controls and click on the drop down next to this shape thing over here. Now you'll see different options and I'll show you which ones you'll need. Make sure that the fill and stroke options are checked. Now the fill should be brighter and the stroke should be darker. You can use any colors but right now I'm going with purple. Now make sure that the stroke is around 40 which looks the best here. Now that we're done adding the circle, nest these two things together in the timeline. After nesting them, make sure it's in the middle of the screen and add the VR glow effect onto the nested sequence. This makes everything look better. Go to the glow effect in the effects controls and make sure that the luma threshold is 0. Then change the glow radius to 265 and the glow saturation to 10. Now add the transform effect onto it. After doing that go to 120 frames forward and add a keyframe for position and rotation. Then go back to the start and change its position so that it's not on the screen anymore. And change the rotation to minus 120 degrees. Now click on the drop down next to position and create an entry curve. Do the same for rotation. And now finally change the shutter angle to 360 degrees for some smooth motion. Work. Now we're gonna animate this visual appeal bar. First select the rectangle tool and drag out a rectangle which looks like this. Then duplicate it. Make the one above green and make the one below red. Then add a linear wipe transition onto the green bar. After doing that go one second forward and create a keyframe for transition completion. Then go another one 110 frames forward and change the value to 69%. After doing that, make sure that the wipe angle is at minus 90 degrees. Create an intermediate curve. Now that we're done animating the bar, nest it. After nesting it, like always, add the VR glow effect and change the luma threshold to 0 and the saturation to 10. Now we're gonna make the text. Click on the text tool and write down visual appeal. You can use any font and color you want but I'm using the made Solvays font. Now that you're done writing the text, resize it and perfectly align it under the bar animation and again add the VR glow effect onto the text and change the luma threshold to zero. After this, nest the two and add a transform effect on it. Go 80 frames forward and add the keyframe for position. Then go to the start of the timeline and lower the position until it's not on the screen anymore. Now click on the drop down next to position and make an entry curve. Now that you're done animating the bar, next nest the walking vector animation and the bar animation together so that everything is easier to control later on. Now we're gonna create the grid background. First go to the project tab and find this icon and click on it. Then select the black video option. It'll create a black video item. Drag it onto the timeline. Find the tint effect in the effects library and drag it onto the black video. Then go to effects controls and change the map black to this color. After doing that, add the grid effect onto the black video. Under the grid effect, change the corner points to 1003 and 589. Change the border to 3, color to white and the opacity to 16% and the blending mode to screen. And finally, add the lens distortion effect and change the curvature to minus 20 and obviously make sure that the black video is under the nested animation. Since you're done with the background, let's add the finishing touches. Right above the background, add the scratch.mp4 video and then change the blending mode to color dodge. Once again, add the lens distortion effect and change the curvature to minus 20. Next, go to the project tab again and this time add an adjustment layer and drag it on top of everything on the timeline. Now, add the lumetri color effect and go to the effects controls. Then click on the drop down next to Vignette. Change the amount to minus 1 and the roundness to 100. Now add the Gaussian blur effect. Then change the amount to 100 and add a circular mask onto it. Invert the mask and change the points to make it look like an oval. Now expand it until it's near the edges of the screen. Then change the feather until it looks promising. Now you're finally done with the final
final touches which means you've made an entire motion graphic for the first time using Premiere Pro. There's endless ways you can use keyframes. You can create subtitle animations, make images slide into the screen and make several other things using keyframes including motion graphics. And if you want any other tutorials you can comment down below so that I can make a whole nother video on that. So make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can never miss out.